second that you decide to diet, you put on more weight. The second you think about not eating, the weight just piles up. Of course, we all feel like that. Because that's not the right premise to start. Stop using the mentality of dieting. It's a lifestyle change. If you want to diet, then you're going to be trapped in this web of yo-yoing. If you want permanent changes, the only time that you stop being health conscious is when you leave this world. Otherwise, every day should not be treated as a diet. Is thinking about long term what you're doing wrong, what you can change and why you're big. Don't take the easy route out. Take a route that is sustainable long term. And I'm going to share today my own unique lessons learned from somebody who was really big, really small, really big, really small. On this channel, you guys will know that I was a point that was half my size and I've put it back on and I'm on a journey. I'm learning. I'm going to share the tips today. And the last tip is really important. So I'll ask you to please watch the whole video. And um, if it's the first time on this channel, please consider subscribing because we share a lot of educative videos, but I'll let you decide at the end. Let's get into the video. Video today, I've just been inspired to talk about myself. Um, I did not plan this, I have no script, but I've been thinking lately a lot about my weight loss journey, right? So without boring you guys too much, taking you back, summary is I've always struggled with my weight, maybe since turning 35 after my fourth daughter. Before that, I was a respectable size 8, 10. What you're seeing on the screen is how I look when I was actually pregnant for my fourth after having three kids already. But before I got to 30, I was a fat child. I remember being um, 16, 15 in, in, in high school and I weighed almost 74 kilos at the time, almost 160 pounds or 65 pounds back then. And I had issues with my knee. And one day I woke up, I saw this girl who we were all relatively big together. Every time we were served a meal, she would just give it to me and go up without eating. And I mind you then, I was really big and I liked to eat like most teenagers. And I was eating all of hers, so I'll have mine and hers. And my weight just kept going up. And this girl, in I think in a month, she lost almost all of her body weight. And that was the moment I had, I had like a revelation, like the Eureka moment. And I said, I don't want to be big anymore because this girl who we were big together has lost all the weight. And I put everything that had sugar in the bin. I used to like baby food, Cerelac. I said to my mom, don't visit me and buy none of this. I have decided that I want to lose weight. Of course, my mom thought, oh yeah, it's a phase. And I lost a lot of weight, went into university slim, and just watched what I was doing. But I was never ever thin. I was always a bit chubby and curvy, so I've never been a thin girl. Till I came here and I came to the UK in my early 20s, life just lived me. And I was probably one of the thinnest in my class at the time. I was really a skinny girl. Whatever I'm going to put on the screen now is me, maybe at 22, 21. I never went to the gym, didn't know what it means to count calories. But I just did not eat that much. Uh, now, fast forward, I had a kid, my first son relatively early. And um, I was about 24. And because I was always small, I didn't even care that I had to count my or watch what I ate. And that was the biggest surprise I had because, boy oh boy, I put on so much weight from being a tiny size 8 while pregnant to something like, I'm sure I got at some point to a size 18 before he was 1 years old. I put on maybe 30 kilos, you know, just impossible weight. Why I'm telling you this story is, looking at my picture after 3 kids, actually pregnant, 3 months pregnant, fit as a fiddle, in my mid-30s and looking at me after one child, I took about 10 years to master what it is to stay fit. Notice I didn't use the word to lose weight because it's about maintaining. What I'm going to share today are the lessons that I've learned and it's very impromptu but it's because I'm on a journey currently. I hit rock bottom last year with my weight, just couldn't push it off. After my last girl, it's going to be five soon, but I have struggled recently to keep the weight off. So I've gone back to the drawing board and taken my pen and paper, taking notes on the things that I did 
that helped me to lose weight. And I'm going to share the mistakes that I made today, five main mistakes that I made that we all still make that might just make that difference in your weight loss journey. Now, the first thing I'm saying without messing about too much is first, whenever I go on the internet and I see a video of how I lost weight fast, I actually dislike the video and unfollow because that is the biggest problem we have. Why are you rushing to lose weight? Why do you want to lose weight for an event? If you have not gotten to the point where you don't need an event to aspire you to lose weight, then you're not ready. Why am I saying this? I have been in this trap and I, more than any, if you, anybody who's known me on a personal level or on my channel when I just started, that was my motto really. I, if I decide now to lose all my weight, I will. At what cost is it? Is it worth it? Remember that when you set yourself those targets and go on a diet like keto or, or, or water or fast or all of this, I call them fat diet soups, you know, shakes, you will lose it. Of course you will. The only times that you're actually prescribed fat is when you're going through surgery. If you're just living your life, can you live on those diets? Do you prefer that you have short-term glory microwave results? So I have stopped putting a timeline to when I want to achieve my goals. Whenever I go on all this AI stuff and they say, when do you want to achieve your goal? I just put two, three years and it's like, oh, we can do that in this time. I'm like, I don't care. I have stopped because when you lose it so quickly, of course you put it on back so quickly. What is your reason? Do you prefer to have a slim body for a wedding in the summer and then in the winter you're three times your size? I have stopped doing it and trust me, the thing that really helped me and or did not help me was the scale. When I was at my smallest, when I had my three kids, I was going on with life, I did not really have a scale. I remember not having a scale for so long because I was okay. I didn't have to, to lose weight to prove a point to anybody, but because I became obsessed about my scale, the day I don't lose, I probably not eat for that day, so that when I climb on the scale, I'll say, oh, I've lost weight. I'm but recognizing the problem is the first step to getting a solution. When I stopped caring about what the scale will say in a week or two weeks and just getting on with it, I feel like I'm a free person. I feel free and I would never hang on to my scale till I feel like I need to be after six months or a year or when there's notably a big difference. That's the first thing I want to talk about. Stop putting real unrealistic timelines. The second thing I want to talk about today is the idea of all or nothing. Again, I'm wearing this cap. In fact, I actually have a whole crown on, on this point. My mentality was either I am doing one ridiculous thing or nothing. The day I, I'll break my say cycle of maybe a water fast or a juice fast or maybe no carbs or not eating after six, it will spiral downhill. And I'll think, oh my God, I'm in week two of this. So I have eaten. Let me just stuff my face. I, I stop that. And that for me is one of the biggest lessons I've learned right now. If you're following me before you see this video, I have been on a, a very nice habit tracking system called 75 Soft. That's why I'm dressed like I'm about to go to the gym, where you have to exercise every day except one day and Try to eat right. It's not said don't eat this, eat that. Exercise right, drink water, and make sure that you read a book. I can tell you hand on heart, it's the 26th today of Jan, I think. And I cannot say that I follow this every day, but trust me, the days I don't drink three liters of water, in the morning I'm up, raving to go. Sorry, I'm a bit thirsty. I'm just drinking my detox drink. Juice, detox juice, which I made myself. I've got a whole playlist of my juicing, by the way. That's beside the point. The days that I don't stick to my water intake, I am still okay. I am still okay to go the next day without saying, I stop it all. I'm just going to eat this week. After it's Friday, let me start on Monday. All or nothing mentality is what killed me. The times that I reach my goal weight, and because I was on one diet or the next, 
I just felt I can let myself now. I've gone for this event and the weight has just been adding and adding and adding up. Please don't have that mentality. It will keep you, will keep you, it will take you so long to hit your goals. What's the third mistake that I made? The third mistake I've talked about this recently on my short videos is looking at people and using them as your benchmark. What do I mean by that? We all have different circumstances, right? We have different challenges. I will not see there's no diet plan for A or for B. There isn't. We all have a different way of dealing with our weight and the way we lose it. So it's really understanding what works for you. And the thing that really misled me and a lot of people perhaps is the culture of the younger people. When I was the age of a lot of the influencers who help people to keep fit, except those who are really into fitness, those who are into healthy lifestyles, they are at that age, I didn't even know what it meant, what the micro macro meant because the metabolic rates is so different from yours. So when you grow older, take into account everything. So on this same point, maybe go check that your thyroids are working well, it's not slow. Check that maybe you, you cannot lose belly fat because you might have fibroids, perhaps you might have an over insulin resistance, leads to a lot of these things. Do your checks, check that you're not know, pre-diabetic, check before you follow what you see because they might be giving you diets, drinking shakes, suggesting things, and you follow. And the worst bit is when they go to, when you go to the gym or you exercise and you have not maybe understood the, I, what it means to exercise your form, the hours you use, the calories burnt, and then you come home and you put everything that they're eating. So these people consume 2,500 calories, 3,000 a day, but they don't lose weight, they don't put on weight. One, the ages, two, personal circumstances, three, how active they are, because you can do the same exercise like A, but you're not putting in the same form, you know, burning it as much, and then you don't lose weight. So try not to follow what looks aesthetically pleasing. Do what you believe, go back to the drawing board. I went back to the drawing board, and I'm not under any pressure to follow any diet or any um, supplements or all of that. No, if you believe you need to, then maybe go and get yourself checked in the hospital that everything is working well so that you can handle the things that are making you not lose weight. So don't just follow what people say. And if you want to do, follow people who have the same sort of lifestyle like you. And that's why on my channel lately, I have only been sharing my journey because I'm after 40. Yeah. <laughs> after 40. Let's get out of the way. <laughs> so most of my videos will be who will help a woman who is in her 40s, a woman probably who's had kids and who has the same metabolic issues, maybe lose skin because I've had, I don't have the flat tummy like I used to because I've had four children and four cesareans. The exercises that I do, the things that I do is different. So maybe if you really believe that you need help, get help from people who have the same issues or values like yourself. Another thing I want to talk about is the obsession with protein. Yes, protein will help you to build muscle mass while keeping you in your calories and helping you to lose weight. Okay, that's a simple thing, it's a simple theory. Before now, when I was, when I, life was more simple, when I did not need to worry, what I'll say is I've just known that processed carbs is not very good for you, okay, because of the sugars, because of the fact that it's talky and it would turn into sugar quickly, spike you up, make you hungry and all that wonderful stuff. What people tend to do is because they're so bent on having protein because we've been told that convert your weight and have that amount of protein which i think it works it's worked for me now that i've been exercising a lot more what they say is i might i'm about say 170 pounds at the moment or whatever i'm meant to have 170 um grams of protein that's a lot of protein but i can have it of course i, I can eat it at what cost do you eat that and then have a lot more of your calories because you're struggling to get the protein? Which is more important? I can tell you for free that what is more important is keeping your calories less. And I always say this, I said it in my last video, it's simple. What you put in, you get out. With my experience with any diet you can think of or any circumstance, 
I have worn that hat. And I can say that if you eat less, forget about exercise, forget about protein, if you eat less than you burn, it doesn't mean that you should not eat enough. It just means that if you burn, burn more, you will lose weight. If you eat almost the same, you will maintain. And if you eat more, you will put on weight. Understand that we need to start counting micros, macros, and then you find yourself so confused, so stressed, and you just throw out the window. Go back to the basics. And on the last point of the mistakes that I did was thinking that exercise meant going to the gym only. The time that I was, uh, that I was fittest, and I, now that I've had the time to remember, since COVID broke out in 2020, yes, I remember that because that was when I was on maternity for my last baby, I have never been a full-time office worker since 2019 when I went to maternity leave. We're talking now five years. Before that, I was in the office every day. Everybody else in the world was. Just to walk to the car, from the car, I work in, the, in an environment where I was going from meeting room to meeting room, just walking from the car park. I used to do 15,000 steps easy, without even tracking. I didn't know, I didn't even have a smart watch with my phone. And I still have the best I've not beat at 25,000 steps and I was working, that was in 2018, because I was on the move. You don't, the way to maintain your weight, and people always say this, when you go and lift weights, I love to lift weights now that I'm into the gym, I just feel it makes me strong, it makes me feel like I'm not, I'm not, I'm, a, I'm feminine, but it makes me feel like a macho feminine woman, I feel elevated, but I'm not doing this now to lose weight, the thing that I'll never stop doing is counting my steps. I'd rather be active because it's been proven that walking will keep you your, maintain your weight as opposed to going to the gym and carrying this weight because what you lose in body mass or what you in terms of lifting weight is so small we overestimate what the gym and exercise does for us because it's been put in our faces it's been sold in that manner but just walking walking it keeps your form better you're eating tummy fat it's something that i did never suffered from i had the flattest tummy till i had my last and i'm working on this now and making sure that i walk a lot. You don't have to even go out and walk out. Just walk in, the, in your home. Just be conscious that don't sit for long hours without getting up. Instead of sending your daughter to pick up your whatever, just try and just be more agile, move more. And the last thing I'll say you should please try to do is don't compromise your sleep for nobody and water. Sleep and water, we can go into that. It's a whole different thing. When I was fittest, I used to sleep full throughout the night. If you have a little baby or business is in the way, of course it's different. But if you can't sleep, stop staying and scrolling and watching this video, go to bed. These are the experiences that I've learned and I hope that this video touches somebody. I hope that you can resonate. If there's anything that I've said that you probably disagree or have other points, please share. But I'll be doing a series of the mistakes that I made because where this has come from, there's a lot more and I'm still on a journey. Thanks again. And if it's the first time that you've seen this black beauty, please don't make it your last. Consider subscribing. I do videos on my healthy lifestyle, productivity, routines, just being a mom and everything in between. Thanks again. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye-bye.